Greetings viewers and welcome to today's video in person event where we will be covering the setup of units of measure items within Sage 200 evolution. Now, the use of measure option allows you to link different variations of units to one stock item. So for example, things like bottles, boxes, barrels and liters, etc., meters and centimeters, allows you to go and specify a unit of measure item for, an, for a stock item and then go process transactions per unit of measure based on the conversion factor. Now, the important thing to understand is that in order for us to implement units of measure, we need to move to our inventory maintenance and we've got the defaults. And within that option, we need to specify that we intend to use units of measure. So as you can see, units of measure, use units of measure option needs to be selected. And once that's done, we'll be able to make use of that feature. Right, that's in order. And as I mentioned previously, is that there's a conversion ratio between one unit and another unit in order for us to determine what the actual unit of measure is going to be. So to do that, we need to go to our maintenance and the inventory items. And there's two options there. Firstly, there's a unit of measure category. Now, these are default options which are created once, once a new company is, is created within Sage 200 Evolution. So the units could either be an amount, an area, a length, a volume, or a weight. So depending on what your item is, you need to link it to a certain unit of measure category. If I then go to units of measure, I now need to specify what my conversion factor is. So in this particular instance, I'm going to use crates and bottles. So first I'm going to set up my crate unit of measure. and specify that it is now going to be an amount. And after this, I'm going to specify what the other conversion factor is. So I'm now going to create bottles. Once again, it's going to be an amount. Obviously, with the category, those two need to be the same. And now I'm going to specify what is the ratio between bottles and crates. So I'm specifying that there are 12 750 milliliter bottles in one plastic crate. So there's my ratio setup. 12 750 ml bottles are contained in one crate. Right, now I'm going to be going on to my inventory items and I'm going to go create the actual unit of measure items. So I'm now going to say, add the item. Right, so it's given the details there, and now I'm going to mark the unit as being a UOM item. And once I do that, you'll see that I've now got an option where I can insert my relevant units. So there's really three options with regards to the units, and these are the stocking unit, the default purchase unit, and the default sell unit. Now, very importantly, is that the stocking unit is created, generated, is, is there, in order for you to determine the quantities of the units. So it's important to understand that once a stock unit has been specified, it cannot be changed. 
So I'm going to say that the items in my warehouse are stocked in the plastic crates. Okay. And when I purchase the item, am I purchasing them in bottles or in crates? So remember is that this field isn't compulsory. And when processing transactions, I can I can switch between purchasing crates and bottles. But I'm just going to say that we're using plastic crates as the purchase unit. And when it comes to selling, I can specify, am I selling in crates or bottles? Or it could be a combination of both. So I'm just going to say for the time being that I'm going to sell in crates and save the record. So if I go back to my item, back to units, we'll see that after the item has been created, that stock unit can, cannot be changed. However, I am still able to go modify the default purchase unit and the default sales unit. Now, if we then go and receive stock items, and let's just go and create a GRV for the item. And now I'm going to, for example, bring in 10 crates. And what you see is that I cannot differentiate between either bringing in a crate or a unit or a specific bottle if need be. So I'm going to say those cost, let's change that to 12. 10 crates, and it's going to be. Change that to right. So I brought in my ten crates and I process that invoice. And if I print my GFP, it's going to tell me that I brought in 10 crates of that unit, which now means that I've got 120 bottles in stock. Right, so now I can go process an invoice for those crates or bottles depending on what I'm selling. Right, so I've got 10 crates available, and now I'm going to sell two crates. I can always just go change that unit of measure if I need to. And I'm going to say that it's my price per crate. Okay. Close that. And we're then going to, so currently now we've sold two crates. So we've had 120 in stock, and now we've got only 96. Right, let's just go back and do an invoice. And now I'm going to sell some bottles. So right, I've currently got eight crates in stock. I'm now going to sell three bottles. OK, 
Okay, so we've got the transaction processed. And as you can see, it tells me what the unit is there. It's a 750 ml bottle. So now if we go and look at our inventory items, we now have seven crates, seven and three quarter crates on hand. So it was a case of 10 being received, two being sold, 24 bottles, and then a further three bottles were sold. And as you can see, the item is marked as a unit of measure item on my grid. Now, the important thing to understand is that obviously when counting stock, we need to differentiate between the bottles and the crates simply because we are selling in bottles and in crates. So I'm going to go create an inventory count. And I'm going to go count the those items that only that item. Right there, my details. Right there's my stock count for my item. If I now go to my, I'm going to go to my inventory count report and go print my stock sheets. And very importantly, I need to go and specify that it's a unit of measure item. So I'm going to say include units of measure on my stock count sheet. And let's just go and preview that. So as you can see, what we have here is based on the fact that it's a unit of measure item, the stock count sheet is going to tell me or allow me to insert the crate quantities counted as well as the individual units being counted. So I've got a crate option there as well as a 750 ml bottle. Right, so I'm going to use this information in order to go count my inventory items. And once that count has been completed, if I then go to my edit quantities, I'm now either can click on the unit tab or I can say units, seeing as that's a unit of measure item. And I now need to capture the plastic crates which were counted as well as the bottles. So, for example, there were seven crates being counted, and perhaps in this case there were only, for example, eight bottles. Okay, and as you can see immediately, there's a variance in the bottles. The crates are correct, but the bottle quantity is different from what the system quantity says. If I now say save and close, I'm now going to complete my stock count. And if you look at my variance report at this point in time, include the units of measure. Yeah. So as you can see, there's a variance. Okay. Tells me that seven crates were counted. However, seven crates were counted, eight bottles. However, there should have been nine in stock. So as you can see, that's where my variance comes from. So very importantly is that when using units of measure that you specify or set up the correct conversion factor. And let's just go and complete this count now. And at this point in time, if I now go look at my items, I'm going to go and inquire on that item. And then as you can see, is there's been transactions which were the items received, brought in by the GRV, items being sold, and then also just the adjustment to take into consideration the variance on my stock count. So just important to remember is that, as I've said, with regards to units of measure, is that the conversion fact needs to be correct. So in this particular instance, one crate equals so many bottles. And 
very important is that if I go to my inventory items, that in the units tab, that the correct stocking unit has been specified. That's obviously the unit, how the item is being stored in your warehouse. And however, you are able then to change the purchase unit and sell unit of the item in processing transactions. So as you can see, a very useful feature in order if you are selling or you're purchasing and buying or you're selling and purchasing items in different formats, um, you can really get a, a very specific or detailed breakdown of exactly how many units you currently have in stock and also transact the different variants or different units of measure. That's a wrap from me. Thank you so much for watching. Goodbye.